Greetings everyone and welcome to the Pale Beyond, a game about Arctic exploration. Now I tried out the demo a little bit and uh, it looked pretty fun, so I decided uh, to do a let's play on it. So let's start a new expedition. And uh, the way this game goes, it's uh, a mix of uh, a visual novel, I guess, and the colony management. Uh, at the start it's mostly a visual novel to give us an intro into the story. I'm not really sure what this thing does, we're writing some sort of a poem. So, all the air be so cold, of flake and white, as a sailor begs their pledge. We have three options over here. So, I'm not sure if that somehow affects our character's personality, but uh, during my playtime of the demo I didn't really figure out what this changes. So I'll just go with uh, whatever sounds good. So, the first option, to the ice, they'll pray that leads reveal. Out in the ice, they'll stake a claim. That in the dark, they'll brace themselves. This one sounds kinda nice, they'll stake a claim. Out in the ice, they'll stake a claim and carve a chorus ahead. Okay, sounds good to me. Homes they'll dream, the souls around of glory found. Glory found sounds good. We, we want some glory, we were taking on a dangerous expedition to the Arctic. Of glory found and forged in frost, so that their tale be spread. And hunger draws the desperate here. It's one that can't be fed. Such lonely souls need lead. It's calling souls disp display. How do you say that? Dispread, I guess? Uh, it's one that can't be fed. I mean, the, the hunger for glory. You always hunger for more, right? So, it's one that can't be fed. What will you do when steel hearts break and courage does abscond? I'll lead these souls, so help the gods. I'll do what must be done indeed. I will learn to live a life out here. First one sounds pretty good. Uh, we are the first mate of the ship that goes uh, to the Arctic. We are not actually the captain. Uh, but still first mate. We are basically the second in command. So we will be leading people. I will lead these souls to help the gods out of the pale beyond. Let's begin our journey. Uh, here we have a very nice job application. Crew wanted. Able-bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. Glory to be had in the event of success. And uh, we are very much interested. You are alone in the office. The tea in your hand has long since gone cold. Uh, yeah, I prefer tea to coffee. It's perfectly adequate. Looking around the room, you can make out a collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. Over here. A metronome ticks away steadily. It's harmless, it's insufferable, I find it rather calming. Well, I do indeed. The dedicated rhythm soothes the senses. It suddenly stops. I guess we're waiting. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Uh, let's take a seat. The chair is uncomfortably large. The seat feels warm. The door behind you swings open. And this here is our captain. The captain bounds past you, to the other side of the desk. Do you have all of your teeth? Sorry. I have enough to get by. Open mouth. Uh, this one sounds kind of cheeky. I've got enough to get by. You never be too careful. The captain sits down. It's the little things you can lose people to. Are you speaking from experience? I've not had scurvy before. You're late. Uh, so this seems kind of aggressive. Are you speaking from experience? Yeah, I guess. Oh, there we go. How many people have died under your supervision? Uh, yeah. None more than I care to admit. Don't appreciate this line of questioning. Well, I, I think we'll go with none. We're trying to apply for a job here, right? Meaning you're either perfect for the job, a liar, or you've never been in command. 
I think we can go with that. Which is it? Uh, the latter. Really? Human tests a person's metal. Do you think you're ready? Yes, I do. I have to be. Is anyone really ready? Yes, I do. Hmm. I see you've already made yourself comfortable. I'm Captain Hunt. Shaw. Your pleasure is mine. Robin Shaw. On your desk? Which ship is that? Oh yeah, that's the ship in the bottom. Ah, this. Detailed, ain't she? Incredibly. Yeah, sure. An old sailor superstition. I, ho I hope you weren't waiting too long. Uh, I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. The advert said there was glory to be had. It all seems a bit convoluted. Convoluted. Keep listening. Sure, let's keep listening. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite. That's why I'm here. And, uh, yeah, sounds good. A thirst for adventure then? He winks. I'd keep that to yourself around the other sailors. They might drown you in it. I have a few questions first. He looks down at his list of questions. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? And uh, this actually gives me some sort of trait. Uh, during the demo, it gave me an extra dialogue option, depending on the trait I chose. And uh, I'm from the city, I'll go with the landborn. So yeah, as you can see, now I have this trait. I'm from the city, but made my way to the sea eventually. Military experience. Colonial, Royal Admiralty. Merchant. Criminal. Yeah, merchant. Sounds kind of good. Sell the merchant lines. 12 years. Very good. What did you trade in? Anything we could get our hands on? Fruit mostly? I knew better than to ask. That sounds like contraband. Uh, fruit mostly. Why not? Everyone loves fruit, right? Honest work. Have you ever fired a weapon? Uh, sure, yeah. Why not? Have you ever killed a man? Directly or otherwise? Uh, have you fought pirates? No, we were very lucky, never, never met any pirate. No. You're not married, are you? Of course not. I'm going on a voyage to the Arctic, what do you mean? You better not have a death wish. One must believe they'll return to justify leaving, the first, uh, leaving in the first place. And less and yeah, you're doing yourself a disservice. Any less and you're doing yourself a disservice. So, where are we headed? Can you get to the point? Let him continue. Uh, sure, let him continue. We're here to find the ship in the bottle. Also, we're going after this. The Viscount. Heard of it? Uh, no, enlighten me. He clears his throat. Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the Dead Peninsula. They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic salt. Did they? If they found it, I might have heard of them. Uh, yeah, let's uh, be a little bit smart about it. She never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost to the ice. Okay, so five years is a bit late for a rescue operation, they're probably dead. This is beginning to sound like a suicide mission, and they're supposed to be chasing this ship. First one sounds good. Alive or not, their research is supposedly of extreme importance. Okay... Alright, you have my attention. The captain smiles. Here's what we know. Not one person or one thing uh, has been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. Until now? Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on that ship. Uh, they're probably lying, rumors of drugs, fools. Where are they now? Dead, but their testimony seems to have outlived them. 
those with more money than sense want that old chip. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will, and, uh, well, my judge of character has gotten me this far. What of the crew? What of our own ship? And who's financing all of this? Well, let's ask about the crew. What, uh, what of our crew? Quite the mix, a work in progress. Some I've known for years. They get in on trust and experience. Others, well, they interview. Don't have a full crew already? And he impressed you? And how large is the crew? Uh, yeah, sure, let's ask about that. As I said, a work in progress. I estimate over 20 when I was settled. We do have a transport though. We'll be traveling on board the Temperance. She's a beauty. Greenwood, generational. Not many like it left these days. The Viscount and the Temperance. They're sister ships, built together. Sent out into this world to die alone. Poetic. Superstition gets people killed. Let's go with poetic. Indeed, I like to think one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the bottle chip. So, what do you think? It's worth it if there's a chance anyone's alive. Sounds like you need all the help you can get. Where can I start? Let's go with this one. We will. But the captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. The captain stands up. We leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. Don't you need uh, more information? Then I must have aced that interview. You're not what I expected. Do I have the job? Yeah, let's uh, be a bit more confident. Or, uh, well, I guess both of these are not exactly very confident, but... Uh, I don't really like the second one, so let's go with this. Don't you need uh, more information? Not if I'm captain, worth his all. I work with people, not professions. I'd sooner trust a good carpenter than a cruel sailor to save me from drowning. But alas, I'll see you on the temperance. I've got a good feeling about you, sure. Thank you, Captain. That makes one of us. The feeling is mutual. Uh, let's go with thank you, Captain. The captain makes his way to the door and you follow. Just gonna sip a quick drink. All that reading got my throat dry. You arrive at the docks, a month to the day. Before you lies a ship, and the letters on its side read Temperance. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man overseeing the loading of cargo. Turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. There we go, you can see our perk uh, procked something here. It's good to see someone with land legs. You must be hunt speak for first mate. He extends an arm. Richard Templeton, a pleasure. Now let's shake his hand, no need to be rude. It's a considered shake. I shall be operating as Chief Science Officer on this expedition. I am also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Ah yeah, the person who's funding this. Do however consider myself and my team to you... Uh, and my team at you and the captain's disposal. What did you specialize in? Mr. Templeton, I look forward to working together. I'm fairly certain we're all disposable. Uh, what did you specialize in? Applied botany. Well, not many... Uh, yeah, there, it's one of the dancers. Not much use for a botanist on the ice, is there? But that's uh, kind of rude, so let's... Uh, I look forward to working with you. Expect you to be up for the task. Some of the layabouts hunt hired are questionable at best. No doubt, I need to inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Though I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rubble I spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you have to whip into shape. 
punctuality, schedule, strict adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. It is our day cycle. I expect you to be the organized sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. Sea folk are known to be unruly. I will do my best to keep them in line. I likely have more in common with the crew than I do with yourself. But once again, kind of rude. I doubt there will be much issue. That's way too confident. Let's go with this one. Good to hear. And let me know when you're ready to depart. And make sure to savor these last moments on land. Less valuable... Uh, the less valuable time we waste here, the better. And here we go. We have uh, several places we can look at. Let's check out the city, I guess. You will be gone for quite a while. It will be some time before you see the city again. Who is this guy? A young man stands at the ramp, stealing himself for the journey, journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp and onto the ship. And uh, this is our ship, the Temperance. Khan's description of the ship was accurate, near identical to the Viscount, barring some modern additions. And uh, when you have a yellow circle like this, it means it progresses the story forward. And uh, here we enter into our first week on the Temperance. <laughs> It's been a month. And yeah, over here we have uh, some sort of log that we're keeping. As you can see, it starts with the poem we wrote at the start. First made show, personal log. It's been one month since I signed on. And one week since we set sail upon temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere before they turn colder. We can write about uh, different things. Temperance. I've never been on a ship like this before. Uh, which is magnificent. A technical marvel. Elegant machinery, expertly weaved for one of the fastest hardwood ships of its day. A re uh, yeah. A reborn for this mission, breathing again with life. She's simply magnificent. Uh, as for its master, as for the rest of the crew. There are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice. To keep up the remaining, uh, to pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sledding dogs. That sounds useful. The crew are a strange lot. I've sailed with worse. They smell terrible. The crew are a strange lot. Eclectic as the ship itself. Who's paying for this? I can't help but wonder who's footing the bill for all this. Cer certainly not the captain. Such exquisite modifications to the ship mustn't have come cheap. I should investigate further. It's none of my business. I should investigate further. I intend to investigate further. As for its master, he's mostly kept to his quarters so far. I trust the captain. I'm not sure what to make of our leader. I need to know if I can trust Captain Hunt. I mean, he hasn't really given me a reason not to trust him, so... And the Captain seems trustworthy... Seems a trustworthy sort. Experience alone justifies his position. There aren't many who make out uh, the other... Make out the other end of the naval military service with all their limbs. Let alone, let alone his vigor. Though he's impulsive, he's not telling the whole truth. Heard the rumors. Heard the rumors. What rumors? I've heard the rumors. Drinking. Dissertation. There's probably a good reason he's dressed in antiques. Oh, so he maybe has some uh, darker side. Perhaps I'm too quick to judge. I mustn't let my guard down. I do find myself warming to the man. Uh, perhaps I'm too quick to judge. And uh, let's sign off. One of Hunt's sailors approaches. And this is Joel. Captain wants to see you at the helm. Uh, good, I want to see him. Hmm. I 
this is uh, not really sure how to interpret that, but over here we can uh, check out the crow's nest. The crow's nest currently stands unoccupied. The scouting team are experienced, are expected to join at the next port. But, uh, can move in different uh, parts of the ship through these icons. But let's go and talk to the captain. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin. Lovely day for it, isn't it? It is indeed, captain. One of our lucky... One of your lucky summoned me. Or don't you have a helmsman to do that for you? It is indeed, captain. Indeed. It's days like these I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He wakes. He woe to stomach a storm, let him continue. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Oh, merchant, there we go. Did you ever take the helm? I'm getting a phone call. Did you ever take the helm of the merchant navy? Or were you stuck carrying crates? Here, why don't you have a try? Uh, sure, let's take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. Uh, we can pan around. The memory of your muscles rear themselves as they begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. There, you have it. The captain pats you on the back. Seems like a good guy. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Uh, it shows us how we can zoom out. Peaceful, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's fine. He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink this morning... Uh, I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. And here we'll get introduced to our first gameplay element of the game. Uh, but first, let's have a look around the... The captain's uh, quarters, or cabin, I suppose. A pristine furnished tub, secured to the floor, okay. A luxury to be had on the ice. A classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. Well, it doesn't seem like they're doing very well judging by the wood flying of the ship. Landborn. You're unsure of what... So, uh, you're unsure of its... of any historical significance though. Uh, though recognize the ship as the galleon of Captain Hamish. On the desk you make out a variety of papers, notes and maps. As well as a sealed letter with a stamp you recognize as the mark the Upperton Pinning, uh, pinning Call. Okay. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. And uh, let's take requests. Take the seat at the end of the room. The captain joins you. Now, let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To start, there's 23 souls signed onto this ex expedition, ourselves included. That's uh, 16 free to be assigned to tasks, if they aren't already busy. The rest are deployed to their permanent stations. And uh, yeah, this is going to explain to us how the crew mechanic works. Uh, you are only able to deploy crew, the white ones, the grey ones are not yet discovered. Uh, who you have discovered? They must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post. Uh, we are picking up the scouting crew at next port. Uh, the lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. The expedition will end tearing itself apart if you end the week with no decorum left. So this is one of our first... Uh, I guess resources that we have to manage is basically the morale of the whole expedition. We have enough provisions for at least 6 months in case of emergency. So this is our food. If we cannot afford the minimum food rations at the end of a week, crew will become malnourished. Unless cured, the malnourishment status will develop into scurvy, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of the week. And more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. And this is our third resource, the fuel. Colder temperatures will increase the minimum fuel requirement at the end of the week. 
You cannot afford that minimum fuel. Crew will become breezy. Unless cured, the freezing status will develop into frostbite. A severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of the week. The sledding dogs, well, they're still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Sending hunts out further requires a greater amount of dogs. They will rest and become available between the weeks. Currently we have no dogs. Now, on to work. And here, we can uh, basically take uh, people from the crew and uh, we discuss things with them. So let's start with uh, Corvid. A sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. So looks like uh, this boy managed to get on the ship. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had. The captain studies them further. You know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir. Har, how old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true, I can pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jiboom from your... Pau spirit? Well, I don't know them either, so... I do. I learned it all from my dad. Your dad? His ward son. Followed him on board back, to, back in the city. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, sure. Here is uh, where we get to make a decision. Can ties you up. Your first mate. What should we do with him? I'd keep him on board. He's not staying on board. It's your decision to make. Nah, I'm gonna be making this decision. Let's keep him on board. More people means uh, more things we can do. He squints. Why? All the help you, you need all the help you can get. This young man wants to help. He's clearly here because of his father. It would be wrong to separate them again. Uh, we don't have the time to accommodate this if the boy wants to freeze to death letter. Uh, you need all the help you can get. Alright boy, consider yourself part of the crew. Be sure to keep your nose clean and follow orders. I will. Thank you sir. Captain, not sir. Hi, Captain. The stowaway joins the two sailors below deck, now a member of the crew. Well, his team's the litter has a new run. We hope the rest won't mind sharing their rations. What of the father? Simple, split their pay and their rations. Uh, I doubt he intended for this to happen, to we'll keep an eye on them both. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Hmm, I suppose you're right. Well, that matter sorted. The, we have uh, Bordel over here. That's the Houndmaster. Have you agreed upon my conditions? The point, eh? Sure, this is Lady Cordel. Cordel here is to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the nearest island. But, you neglected to inform me that you are bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have a good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole canal. Canal. It's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Never before has a, uh, has a buyer been so dishonest. Never before has a seller made such a strong uh, made such strong demands. Lady Cordell, and what exactly are those demands? You already sold the dogs, did you not? Uh, what exactly are those demands? Let's uh, investigate further. She demands we allow her to come along on the expedition. As a member of the crew. None on this ship have the expertise and familiarity with those dogs that I possess. If you are taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma show. We've just accepted a stowaway. Bring on another member of the crew is a risk. 
Sure. But our hands may be tight. Your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. I don't see the harm in having an expert on sled dogs. A good point, Sean. Sure. to her. This deal is already to your benefit. Do you have any more? Uh, do you have anyone on board with expensive training in the management and ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to hold them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge shall prove valuable. Don't expect the crew to waste time talk taking care of your mutts then. I hope you are as experienced as you claim, Cordell. That sounds good. Trust me, I am. I'll have a room prepared for you below there. No need, you'll find me in the forecastle with my dogs. She leaves. I hope I'm not making a mistake, Sean. And uh, here we go, we have 14 dogs now. That's uh, all the requests for this week.